Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Today is a Tour de France. Where it's passing by my town here. So my dad is going to drop us off in the town. Where the my, of town. With Dahlia, yeah, with Dahlia and my brother. And we'll see the Tour de France pass. So hopefully it's not an epic fail. And uh, we'll see. We're now walking towards the center. This is uh, the prison, by the way, if you cared. My brother is here. <laughs> <laughs> and let's go. Let's talk about one-shot color cameras. So one-shot color cameras, which are usually just called OSC cameras, are cameras that, of course, produce color images. So in very simple terms, the type of images that you get out of OSC cameras are similar to DSLR and mirrorless cameras. Getting fully colored images makes OSC cameras much less daunting than monochrome cameras, which produce only black and gray images. DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras are technically one-shot color cameras, but um, on, when it comes to Astro, like if you go on forums and on groups, reading or hearing about the term OSC always refers to this type of camera, so the cooled color cameras. Mm -hmm. If you're currently planning to get your first astronomy dedicated camera, know that an OSC camera is going to be much less frustrating to use. And it's going to be more affordable than just jumping straight into the monochrome camera world. And that's because you don't have to buy all the filters that have to come with it. The sensor in one shot color cameras is actually also black and gray, which people don't often know. Uh, but a Bayer matrix color filter is built on top of the sensor to be able to turn the monochrome data from this into color. Uh, this is also the case in DSLR and mirrorless cameras, but you only know that if you're shooting RAW. The most common Bayer matrix pattern for astrophotography cameras is RGGB. And because the OSC camera is shooting in pure RAW format, the files you will open on your computer will look great. So don't worry, that is normal. Uh, the sensor is once again black and gray, but there is uh, the color filter uh, built on top. Um, if you do process your images from this, you'll have to go through a process called debayer, and we'll talk about debayering in the Processing Mastery chapter. One-shot color cameras are perfect to image broadband targets like galaxies, clusters, and a bunch of different types of nebulae. Nothing can beat monochrome um, cameras for emission nebulae though. Those are the absolute best type of cameras you can get in the long term if you love nebulae, because of all the gases that are present, especially in emission nebulae. Um, you will be able to get some amazing results on the same nebulae with this camera as well, as long as you use you know, a great dual band filter and some good processing techniques. And we'll talk about all the types of filters in the Filters Mastery chapter, but we do recommend getting a dual band filter if you plan on imaging emission nebulae, especially from the city. Now, let's say you've decided to get an OSC camera. Uh, you will still need to decide if you want to get a crop sensor camera or a full frame sensor camera. The main difference between the two is that a full frame camera will have a much wider field of view, but will also be much, much, much more sensitive to any issues. Uh, once again, like tilt or back focus and all that. The sensor is larger, so you will have to deal with that. Full frame cameras are great tools, but they can introduce some new challenges. For example, not all telescopes can handle a full frame camera without vignetting. And only telescopes with a full illuminated circle are a good match for full frame cameras. And it's also difficult to reach the perfect back focus with this type of camera than it is with a crop sensor camera. 
So if you're still somewhat of a beginner, go with a cropped sensor camera, which will save you a lot of frustration. Uh, in one of the upcoming lessons, we'll have a comparison between a cropped sensor camera and a full frame camera as we go over uh, the physical aspects of each. Monochrome cameras are almost identical to OSC cameras, but they don't have a color filter built over the sensor. So they're more challenging to use than color cameras. But a mono camera is the way to go if you are looking for the absolute best image quality and full freedom with your colors. Yes. So monochrome cameras work with individual filters and you can't really image without them. So you'll need to understand the different types of filters and you'll need to know how to use them. There are two categories of filters for mono cameras, uh, broadband, so LRGB, which stands for luminance, red, green, and blue. Uh, those capture the color uh, in space and are great for galaxies, clusters, comets, and some nebulae. Uh, also, we have the second category, which is narrowband, HSO, which is hydrogen alpha, sulfur 2, and oxygen 3. Uh, those capture the gas and not the color of space. Uh, they are perfect for emission nebulae mostly and for some other uh, objects. They are also very good at blocking light pollution, which is amazing for imaging from home. We'll talk about filters more in the filters mastery chapter, but know that the hydrogen alpha filter is the best at blocking out light pollution, followed by the S2 filter. The O3 filter does struggle a bit under heavy light pollution, but can still be used. If you mostly image from home, but also live not too far from a dark site, it is always a good idea to shoot HA and S2 from home and then spend a night or two away from the city to capture the O3 data which is what we did for our Thor's helmet image, and it turned out great. Worth a struggle, promise, yeah. promise, promise. So although monochrome cameras are more difficult to use than DSLRs or OSC cameras, we went straight from a DSLR to a monochrome, completely skipped the OSC when we first upgraded our gear. And you know what? I think it turned out pretty well. <laughs> it was hard, but it turned out pretty well We're for still alive. us. Yes. So decide whether you want to take the safe route and just go OSC first, or if you jump to mono right away, just be prepared to deal with the steeper learning curve that comes with it. The Galactic Course Ultimate Bundle gives you hundreds of lessons covering all types of astrophotography, as well as processing guides for getting the very best out of your data, all in one place. You might wonder why pay when you can find free tutorials on YouTube. I have spent years building the Galactic Course to make it the absolute best possible astrophotography resource on the internet. No more wasting time bouncing around random YouTube videos. Everything you need is right there on your dashboard, always updated. And there is so much more than that. Courses have videos, detailed text, downloadables, a glossary, discounts, and are linked to the Galactic Lounge forum as well as Discord where you can get help, share your pics, and interact with other members at any time. The Galactic Course is designed with learning in mind. No fluff, no annoying music. Just clear teaching designed to make you the best astrophotographer you can be. Don't just trust me, also trust the hundreds of other members who have reviewed the content. Join one of the bundles now or start with any course, link in the description.